The aim of this video is to share a bit about Antonio's journey learning to sing and improve his voice and work on different stuff with you guys and hopefully drop some vocal wisdom and valuable nuggets of information along the way that mm -hmm. can maybe help you out with your singing if you're stuck with a similar problem that maybe Antonio has faced himself. Hi everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm Gregory West and today I'm here with my friend and teacher in training, Antonio Antunes. Mm -hmm. Hi guys, nice to meet you, pleasure to be here. Antonio is doing the new teacher in training program that I've started and we've been working together in that for maybe six, seven months now yeah. or so, so that's been great. We met a few years ago doing a musical theater uh, audition class mm -hmm. together and that was that was before I was even vocal coaching yeah and we were just in that class singing together mm -hmm. hopefully soon in a couple of months we're going to be wrapping up the end of our teacher training process and antonio is going to be ready to work with singers when that happens i will be letting people know via the email subscriber list so if you're interested in working with antonio or just interested in hearing what's going on in the channel when more live streams are going to happen possibly being a test singer for the voice lessons that i'm doing with more teachers and training which would possibly be free or very reduced lesson rate you can go ahead and sign up to the email list below so let's talk about your journey with singing the higher notes because yeah. when we first met they weren't there. <laughs> there there were notes there were just notes no high notes i went to university in the east coast for music theater musical theater training acting singing dancing the typical sort of conservatory training we see in america um focusing on a primarily classical foundation that focused a lot on a lot of relaxed modes of singing and really approaching singing as something that should be easy and very, very relaxed. Hmm. Very little emphasis was placed on pop singing or really anything beyond that. Um, yeah, and just as a result of that, I was told that as a result of the voice type that I was categorized in, I was told, oh, we believe you to be a baritone. Baritones are known to sing from so-and-so range to so-and-so range and that probably like didn't even go beyond like an e an e4 probably d4 at the highest ah! that was high for me and i was told based on the quality of my voice this is where i should live in and maybe push it a, a bit beyond that but there was really nothing that i was given to work beyond that and so it was really difficult once i got into really the industry finding out that oh gosh even if i want to do pop rock singing auditions and just musical theater everything is so high yeah. <laughs> d and e did really did not help me that no. much at all i would say and it was really hard i hadn't i had no way of before meeting greg how to understanding how to do what i wanted to do with my voice in a way that was sustainable and that i um desired it's a very common experience right amongst mm -hmm. people that Absolutely. you know you're a lower voice type and there's nothing we can do about it, unfortunately, yeah. right? And I, mm -hmm. I think it's probably the school pathway is why first through choir, right? Like mm -hmm. most singers Follow kind singer. of are in choir maybe at a younger age. And so there's a lot of people that are told, you're a baritone, that's why you can't sing high. And it, it usually boils down to that's what's said because those teachers, that's what was said to them. They don't mm -hmm. really know any better. So they're just sort of repeating the same thing. Mm -hmm. But in fact, we all <laughs> can sing can high. Absolutely. We can all develop <laughs> it. So it sounds like you basically had this roadblock of thinking that your voice type was limited based off of what people had had told you um, and that you, so you weren't really even looking to develop your voice to sing higher and you weren't even trying yeah. to train it you were just like this is hard but it is what it yeah is. i mean i was basically <laughs> in a way not to not to throw myself under the bus but being doing what i was told in a way mm. that i should be using my voice in the way that would be most beneficial, which was to mm. sing low, to sing free, to sing very, very macho. But all, I always wanted to sing higher. Yeah. It was just a matter of how do I do that when I'm kind of being given conflicting information. So what changed? I found that after beginning to work casually with Gregory, I was able to find new avenues of singing that really were singing high notes specifically that were mm. unlike anything that I was ever taught to do before. I was taught that there should be almost no physical engagement. Mm -hmm. However, that was totally the opposite of what I found with you. You mm -hmm. know, the, this idea of this approach I first tried at first was very much to use a very relaxed positioning in my larynx, very relaxed overall vocal effort. 
mm-hmm. from a very um, laryngeal point of view. Mm-hmm. In other words, I had to really disengage from any kind of throat tension or anything. I was kind of signaling and noticing in myself mm-hmm. because I was told that's what I should be doing. Right. However, what really changed the game for me was understanding that there's a degree of necessary effort that I had to be using if I wanted to be singing powerfully, if I wanted to be singing higher in the way that I hear, you know, a lot of these amazing pop singers, you think The Doors, you think um, Coldplay, you think of um, Linkin Park, you just think of, you know, Bruno Mars, all these amazing pop singers. Mm -hmm. And even in my, for all my musical theater fans out there, you just think of all these shows in Rents, you think of, um, you think of like a chorus line, um, what's happening right now, Hamilton even, all these popular shows in both pop singing and musical theater show Mm -hmm. tunes are all wanting this really big brassy sound that everybody wants Mm -hmm. and so really learning how to get that sound required a degree of more muscle engagement and Mm -hmm. more laryngeal effort and athleticism that i just plainly did not know i had to do at all before right it was never something that was communicated to me yeah and it was a big game changer i remember when we met i wasn't really teaching voice lessons at the time um and I had just tried to give you a couple of tips and it was mainly like, you have to hold on. Like, yeah, <laughs> you, can't, you can't let go. Right? <laughs> Something so simple as that. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like you, you know, you have to just nudging you in the right mm-hmm. direction. And then I think that was, that was just kind of the opening of Pandora's box for you. Because then right. when I heard you, you know, months later, or maybe it was even a year or more or, or something later, you had really started to develop, you know, on your own more things in your voice Mm -hmm. right which is usually it is the purpose of a vocal coach to kind of tell somebody like well go in this direction for a while Mm -hmm. (laughs) and play with this Mm -hmm. and then see what you're able to discover and so you did you did discover some useful stuff that started Mm -hmm. to coordinate absolutely your high range right yes By the way, guys, if you're liking this video and finding value from it, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Drop a comment if you have a question about anything as well, and we will get back to you. Can you talk about that a little bit more? You cued into finding basically more Mm -hmm. effort in your larynx to hold on so that you wouldn't go to falsetto. Can you talk a bit more about that? Maybe show us, you know. Absolutely. So I can kind of just give a bit of a demo for everyone um, to give us like a clue into what I'm like what I'm talking about as far as how it was before compared to how it is now Mm -hmm. Um, if we're thinking like let's say let's find a wonderful note um, even E to F even in this range if I was trying to go above this it would be something like this I think I would have to think oh no I'm going higher I have to be relaxing so much more immediately we would notice a loss of the weight that I was trying to retain Mm -hmm. a loss of this connectiveness connectedness that you describe Mm -hmm. and it really was the only way I knew how to do it I was thinking okay maybe what happens if I just like yawn more and I loved also as a caveat as a side note I love my dark sounds Mm -hmm. up there they you know I was told sing darkly a dark tone's beautiful in your voice because you already have that keep in that but if I tried to go higher nothing was it would just lose automatically there would be nothing sustainable I can use but when we began working on these small ideas of necessary tension is something we like to discuss in this Mm -hmm. model is that as opposed to letting go up there I had to think of okay a really helpful cue we tried to kind of practice on was like what if you imagine the feeling of holding on to something? Ha! Greg, you know, so aptly, you know, guided me with the tip of, oh, just think of like, what is that feeling when you're holding your breath? Ha! I'm like, ha! okay, it's like I'm holding on to something. I didn't know what it was at the beginning. I'm like, ha! something's holding there. It's not painful. It's not hurting me, but mm-hmm. I'm, ha! I'm holding on to something and I can speak in it too, right? Compared to speaking very, very loose and there's just nothing mm-hmm. that's really kind of active in a physical sense Mm -hmm. there's no muscle activation there Mm -hmm. so if i had done the same few notes with that in mind i'm like okay if you know first playing around with this what is this right and i was like whoa the first time I did that, it was also not that high, guys. It was not singing B's and F's, uh, B's and C's. It was very, even just at like, you know, around this range. Ha, ah, ah, that was like, for me, for the longest time, 
pushing the limits that mm. range what mm-hmm. is that like f to g you yeah. know f g range g sharp was really the pushing myself to the absolute physical limit mm. when i would try to do a sing up in this range my way the way i was instructed mm-hmm. with a very kind of loose connection to the folds mm-hmm. very very minimal uh, muscular effort mm-hmm. and engagement in any of this area you mm-hmm. know if it was tense it was wrong and that's mm-hmm. something i lived by you know and it showed in my singing and the limitations right. but simply the idea of huh, what is it like if i hold my breath right. what is that like what does that do to me mm-hmm. for my sound and the sound that i want it fully changed the game mm-hmm. it expanded my range almost immediately mm-hmm. but truly and honestly after quite a, a while of practice it mm. was not something i was comfortable with at all mm. it was essentially in essence the exact opposite i was taught to do right and that's had, very interesting and, and that's a big point. <laughs> basically yeah. you know you're trying to avoid sensations of discomfort and maybe even not just physically but psychologically mm-hmm. like it should be feel easy it should be Absolutely. easy but it sounds like you had to go through this process of coordinating and figuring out how to do something that wasn't easy to do physically mm-hmm. and wasn't easy to do like maybe from a mental, from a mental and a, like a concentrative perspective maybe take yes. a lot of focus but also even courage that like man this is like hard mm-hmm. to do and maybe even scary yeah you know to kind of experience that so mm-hmm. yeah it's a good it's a good point yeah so in the west vocal method we basically refer to what antonio was finding as tight mode which is something that i've talked about on this channel before specifically with a video called um, How to Sing in Mixed Voice Flagellate Tension, something like that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And in that video, I talk about basically finding this type of squeeze, which is exactly what we're talking about, some kind of tension Mm -hmm. in your larynx that you have naturally whenever you make a vocal fry. Uh, If you take this fry sound, uh, which we basically call a creak, uh, 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 and you maintain it and you try to go higher, uh, you can find this kind of tight falsetto. And if you add air to that, uh, you could hear this little pop for a second. So I'll try that again. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 and I would refer to that as flagelle, that sort of thing. And I would say that goes higher than the falsetto, uh, typically. And that tightness that is happening to the voice from that, that creaking leads into tight mode, basically. So and that's what Antonio was finding that, mm-hmm. okay, wait, I'm squeezing something in here. It's letting me hold on. And he was doing it to such an extent that it pulled him into tight mode uh, in not only in the falsetto, but also allowed him to, to hold on mm-hmm. in the modal register and start to be able to use mixed voice as well. Yeah. So... Yeah. You basically were learning tight mode. You were finding this in your voice. You were coordinating it. You could, you know, bust out some mixed voice. Um, you could pull modal up to a certain, you know, range higher than you could before. Mm-hmm. But then where did it go? What happened after that? How did you move forward? Yeah, so great question. I sort of had to come to the realization myself that I was getting a lot of benefit from this one technique I was learning from you mm-hmm. and that I learned to expand on my own. However, there reached a point where I just simply had to try something different for the sound I wanted. And one of my favorite um, vocal mentors and just vocalists you know, in the world, Natalie Weiss, I had been following her work since I was in high school trying to look for singers to aspire to. And I had come across her videos of coaching and simply to watch somebody else in their element teaching instructing though i was simply just the audience member to this teaching lesson was so incredible as far as how i could learn to sing myself and create mm. new ways for me to practice i was not really great at belting at this time i was do- using the, the tight mode we, we learned and we just covered recently something as simple as hey taxi i'm yelling at you and this is very weird <laughs> things as simple and as mundane as an everyday activity though I didn't know at the time, was helping me to prime my way for singing to prepare for belting. Mm. And one of the most important things also was just simply keeping open to other instructors and to other styles of how to learn and teach about singing. Cool. Yeah. So you, you just kind of exposed yourself to more information mm-hmm. and then you, you just kind of soaked it in. Mm-hmm. And that's maybe something you wouldn't have been able or willing to do 
when you were stuck in the I'm a baritone and I can't sing high because mm-hmm. it was the wrong mindset of yeah. I'm stuck here. Then that changed, and then you're like, wait, I can I can do something here. Yeah. What else can I learn and grow and and look at different sources of you know information and exactly inspiration. So that's great. Absolutely. Fast forward to the last six or seven months, and a lot has changed in your voice. Yeah. And technically what you're able to do Mm -hmm. so let's just share with them a little bit about that journey and what you've learned and realized and um let's let's maybe just start with aperture control right so with aperture control we're fully focusing on this idea of you know a big part of this program and of the studio method is focusing on on ideas of spectrum right so we think of something as far as loose to tight right i was excelling in spades at a tight configuration of singing. Even in the falsetto, ah, 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 everything, there was very limited, something I noticed that I wanted to work on was the limitation of any kind of breathiness as mm. far as my tone. I could do a breathy falsetto, something I kind of played around with. Yeah, yeah, but it was very specific. Mm. It was what I call like a dinky pop voice. A pop head <laughs> voice. And so you think like, yeah, I'm singing pop. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. But then as we worked, it's like, okay, let's do that. That's great if you want that. But how far can we expand that? So truly, I had to learn to still acknowledge the help that the tight mode was helping, but also learn that I have to work on controlling more intentionally the airflow. Mm. And so what I meant by that, even in my lower range, it's something, eh, something as loose as that eh, eh, was so hard for me. Mm-hmm. I like really, I didn't have that at all, to be fair, y'all. It, if not, I'm not lying. I just didn't have it. <laughs> he's, <laughs> I'm not, not, he's not lying. I'm not, I'm not just making up a story. Like it wasn't, mm-hmm. it was like not possible. I was mm-hmm. loving this tight mode, which in essence meant that I was holding back more airflow. Right. Eh, eh, if we hear that, Eh, eh, and then take that on a spectrum, right? Eh, 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 eh. We hear that there's a distinctive tonal change that's mm-hmm. happening there. Even not just in this lower range, but in my falsetto too, it was so hard to get it. But now mm-hmm. it's like, I can choose if I want to a very tight falsetto. And that completely changed the mm. game as far as the volume that was possible mm, right <laughs> all i could do again the pop falsetto i wanted to be a pop star so bad yeah <laughs> <laughs> was all i could do but now by understanding that there's a relationship between the airflow how much of it we're allowing to pass through that's mm. audible and how much we're as a result of our resistance from the vocal folds holding back mm-hmm. so as to, to us to remove that breathy sound right was something that's been and still is a really big game changer Right. As far as, you know, it's chall- it's still challenging work. I catch myself being like, oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> got to gotta re- um, reset and restart. But yeah. it's really been a game changer, not just in these two ranges, my modal chest register in falsetto, but everywhere else mm-hmm. in the mixing range, too. My mix doesn't have to be so tight all the time. I can loosen it up. Mm-hmm. And there's just more options for how I want to approach all of my singing right so, yeah. so now you have access to these breathy textures um across your different registers in the falsetto mm-hmm. and mix and modal and it was an interesting comment you made mm-hmm. it actually led to more volume you kind of yes. said that as a as a, a, a side off, note yeah as a side mm-hmm. note but uh that's huge so yeah. y- it, you were getting definitely less volume in your tight mode Surely. than is your you know maximum Mm -hmm. volume that is possible and that was one of the crazy things is that starting to increase the airflow not even going breathy Mm -hmm. but just letting a bit more airflow go through your volume got exploded much much greater it was a very significant difference your voice became more powerful as Mm -hmm. a result of understanding better that okay there's that glottal resistance Mm -hmm. but you don't have to you don't have to do it so hard that it's you know super duper tight and you can loosen it a bit without going ah super mm-hmm. breathy and you can go ah you know like there's that range of mm-hmm. control there's there. the middle ground yeah there's yeah. a middle ground and just balancing better on that loose to tight spectrum mm-hmm. what we call the aperture the aperture mm-hmm. that's led to way more volume which is awesome yeah. and all across the board and it's been really encouraging that volume control and like the issue of support right it's a huge topic for singers was such a mystery for me. I felt like I was working hard 
everything in my torso, what I was told to do and what I was learning was there, I was thinking. But mm. just that element of that awareness was missing. Mm. And when it, once I was able to find that control over that airflow and breathy or not, whether I wanted it to be breathy or not breathy, fully was the missing puzzle piece. Right. Help me just so click things in. It sounds like it's like it wasn't. All, you know, the focus on support could only do so much mm -hmm. when there is this issue here where you also needed to have the awareness to be able to change with the vocal folds yeah. to be able to affect their resistance. So less yeah. and then more. And then that also, it's connected to your support. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I hope it does. <laughs> it should. <laughs> and so another huge thing was, uh, you touched a little bit on it, was mm. the falsetto, right? Yeah. Developing the falsetto more and starting to get in touch more with what we call the falsetto mix yeah. and developing that. So tell us tell us a bit about it. Yeah, so this has been the f most fun, not challenging part at all. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's something really for the longest time prior, even prior to this training program, I had not even considered to want to develop at all. But then, you know, we think of a sound like the Bee Gees, right? It's a very like, prominent example of these guys singing so high, but you're wondering what in the world are they doing, right? Just staying alive! And I'm like, whoa, that's like, are they belting? Are they mixing? What's happening? You yeah, know? Yeah. But it was a matter of really having to start from, you know, something we have to be humble with with ourselves and be willing to go through the humility of it all. Having to start from zero to nothing to something, zero mm -hmm. to hero. Mm -hmm. um, I had no, as I briefly mentioned, no falsetto capabilities really at all. Mm -hmm. I could do something very breathy and... Great, I can just start with more airflow. Great. Like, what does that sound like, right? Compared to what I would normally do. Okay, very limited, very held back. It's very, very stagnant. Adding more of that. Okay, great. It's a little bit louder, but something's missing. It's like, I wanted this huge booming sound, right? Mm. Twi you know, twang is one thing, something we talk about, the idea of narrowing our pharynx. We have our oral pharynx. And we also have, you know, we can um, narrow in the larynx. Narrow in the well. larynx as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and as I was combining them, thinking, okay, great, maybe that will help mm -hmm. in our training. And as I found, okay, combining falsetto, like, ee, combining this boomier sound, ee, and then trying it in an exercise, ee, ah, and I'm like, oh, wow, what's happening? Mm -hmm. That's a mix, I think, but mm -hmm. it's not the same as the tight mode thing I was mm -hmm. doing before. Right. That one is so lacking in air, and the other one was just really like mind blown, guys. <laughs> and there's a big difference in yeah. volume too. Yeah. Between the two of them, actually, the one that's not the tight mode is a, is louder mm -hmm. and much louder in the room too, mm -hmm. in a way that maybe doesn't carry through the microphone because mm -hmm. some things don't transmit as well. Yeah. It sounds like oh, that sounds maybe even louder. Yeah. But like a ah versus a. This second one's like what double the volume yeah, in the just room. It just, it's like very yeah. ringy, and the first one's mm -hmm. not. Yeah. So which was tight mode on the first one, and then not tight mode on the second one. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's that's great. It goes to mm -hmm. show. Yeah, more. Also, connects with the volume that we talked about in the modal as well. Yeah. That you're just getting more volume and a buzzier mm -hmm. sound mm -hmm. uh, coming in. So and these things all go together. Right. It doesn't have to be a matter of I'm learning one goal. I'm working towards this. Great, I've achieved the goal, I reached the finish line. Now, how do I connect this to the rest of my singing? Right. All these components from your airflow to the shape of your vocal tract and how you're playing around with these factors, it's like we think of kind of like a machine. They're all connected. This system mm -hmm. is built upon imagining your voice as a machine or as opposed to just being able to do whatever it wants and you have no control over your voice, you're able to select the register that you want. Okay, I want to be mixing select this idea of the weight i want a very heavy sound mm. selecting all these other components as buttons and levers that we can control mm -hmm. and by focusing on this new area of development in my falsetto and falsetto mix it's been totally something i've been able to explore and expand throughout my singing as a whole right and that's something that we really cannot um, emphasize anymore is that Everything is interconnected. Everything's right. peripheral. We're training things side to side mm -hmm. so that they help you in all the side goals that you want and in your main goals as a singer. And that's something that's been really um, 
revolutionary for me yeah as a singer it's beautiful and a vocal, beautifully and a said yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's uh it's that can be hard because mm -hmm. as a singer you you may feel like this is not exactly my goal and what i want to work on mm -hmm. but then as you said there's it's like yeah it's it's not exactly like the target it's maybe adjacent to the target mm -hmm. and singers don't always know that that it is that yeah. it's connected in some way and so your job as a vocal coach in some sense is mm -hmm. to like guide people you know no like this is connected you working on your falsetto is connected yeah. to your modal we're it not is, just wasting your time yeah. <laughs> it is connected somehow you yeah. just have to you have to trust the process and go through mm -hmm. it and you'll see you know that change happen you know you have to wait forever but mm -hmm. you'll see it happen pretty quickly all right guys mm -hmm. so we'll wrap it up here thanks for watching to the end if you made it uh if you have a question either you know for me or antonio just write it in the comments below and we will respond to it again if you're interested in taking lessons with antonio when he's ready or in just seeing you know more about what's going on here at studio west regarding you know releasing more content joining live streams becoming a, a test singer volunteering to to be a test singer for a reduced lesson rate um, go ahead and subscribe to the email list in the link below and uh, we'll see you on the next video Keep practicing and keep singing guys and thank you so much for having me greg yeah thanks for we'll being see here. you all soon okay bye bye, -bye.